welcome. My name is Mario Batali, and this is Molto Mario. I'm here with my good friends Vinny, Gregory, and Eric today, and we're talking about Cucina Italiana. More specifically, of course, we always want to talk about something more geographical, and today we're going to talk about the cooking of Sicily, and more specifically than that, we're talking about the town of Palermo, one of the most beautiful towns in all of Sicily, one that's just retained a lot of the Arabic influence. There's a beautiful market called La Vucheria, and just off La Mar Il Mercato Vucheria is a beautiful restaurant called Osteria de Vespri. Today we're going to make three of the dishes from there, one of which is a simple salad made with frittata and oranges. The next one is spaghetti with breadcrumbs and raisins. And the third one is a stuffed sardines with a little sweet peppers and lemon that is just going to blow our socks off. The whole idea and understanding what Sicilian cooking about, as it is for any other region in Italy, is what we cook with is what grows there naturally. So there's an abundance of citrus and the wild fennel and herbs is something that you'll notice all over in all of the dishes that you ever taste from Sicily, as well as just growing all over the weeds and off the Australia and off of all the roads outside of the towns. It's something that is very much a part of the Italian culture is to go out and find something that's already there, bring it home and cook it up very simply. Today the idea is that we're going to make some simple frittatas and I'm going to toss them in an interesting way into a salad just like I had at this beautiful Ostidia. Now the main idea here first is to take some of these herbs. Now we have some beautiful oregano, and we have some chives and mint. One of the big things that you'll notice a lot when you're in Italy is, first of all, the use of fennel, and that's even more widely obvious in Sicily, and also the use of chilies and mint together. So I'm going to take some basil, some mint, some oregano, and some fennel fronds, and we're just going to give it a rough chop. Now, when we're talking about chopping technique, this is something that would probably be referred to by the French as a chiffonade, but in Italy you just call it roughly chopping. The French would probably spend a lot of time rolling it up and making it look like a cigar, which isn't a bad thing, but the Italian, realize, the Italian culture realizes that it's more about just giving them a quick chop so that it releases those essential oils to make the flavor of your dish the most important thing, not necessarily the way it looks. So we're going to add a little bit of salt, and then we're going to take some eggs. Mario, that fennel, that's not margarine, is it? No, no. The margarine, actually, the one thing that smells a little bit like margarine would be the oregano. And I find, I give that a pinch. they're supposed to be together. Right. They're almost very similar. The oregano tends to grow wild and dries a lot better than the margarine. And, but the margarine has, for me, a little bit sexier of a flavor, but it's a little bit more delicate. So you have to be careful with the margarine. Sometimes you don't get the flavor. One of the nice things about oregano is it dries really well, and you can dry your own by just buying these plants right at the grocery store and then just hanging it upside down in the kitchen. You take all this tw the twigs together, tie them together with a little piece of string, hang them over the stove and just let them sit there for a week and they'll dry out and then you'll have this beautiful fresh dried Can oregano. Can you put them in a, a very low oven to dry out? A dry, you know, a I think a, a low okay. oven tends to dry them out too, too much, much and makes them too brittle. It also I think cooks out some of the flavor. So I'd just as soon let it dry at its own little pace in the kitchen. Now I'm going to take some escarole, but you could just as easily take any salad that you want. I like it to have a little bitter backbone, Is which escarole, escarole does. No, Is escarole's clean. Clean? Yeah. There's, sometimes you can tell, it depends. When, when, you, uh, when you pick something up, it depends on when it was harvested. If it was harvested the day after a rainstorm, what happens is when the rain hits the dirt, it splashes the dirt up. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't wash it, but what we do is just submerge the whole heads in, let them sit there, and then just shake them out like that. Now, I've got my eggs going here. I've got my nonstick pans here, but they're not essential if you're confident. One of the things that's most important to understand about cooking is the pan, the omelet, the cake, anything you're trying to turn over, it senses your fear. So if you're confident with it and don't worry about it, it will always work. But if you approach it too tentatively, it's something that will always stick. So now I'm just going to throw about a third of that mixture into each one and make ourselves three little frittate, which are basically just omelets, as it were. Let's see, what am I looking for? That. I want to get them out to the edge, so I give them a little spill. And we're going to allow it to puff up. I'm going to add just a little bit of chilies now, because that's just the way I, the kind of guy I am. And I love the way it works with the mint. And then we're just going to take a look like that, let it set for a second, and now I'll start to assemble the rest of my salad. And that is to say, I'll grab the bowl, and bring together escarole that I'm going to cut quite thin to kind of mimic the way that we're going to make these little pieces of frittata look. And that's kind of the extent of our visual key here. 
is to make those about the same size. We're always thinking about how we can make the presentation a little bit more interesting. In some way, you want to mimic things. You want to make things look different. Sometimes you want them to look exactly the same. So you just cut them all differently. Is something you can replace the escrow with if it's not in season? Absolutely. Well? If you can't find escrow, any vaguely bitter green is going to work for you. Now, there's your omelet. You want to just kind of give it a little flip like so. And we're going to cook these all the way through. There's not going to be any medium rare or even vaguely runny eggs. And the trick to these beautiful nonstick pans is to not worry and just kind of go ahead and move it through. And then we're going to lower the heat on that second side while we bring everything together for the rest of the dish. Now, we're going to use oranges because if you're in Sicily, there's an incredible amount of citrus. And all you want to do is grate the zest off anything you're ever going to use because that's what makes it tasty. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit more because I really like that zesty punch. We're going to add a little bit of lemon zest. We're going to add some orange segments, which are easy to do. I'll show you how to make those really quickly. You just take the oranges like so, cut them straight across like that. Then cutting just along the skin, you see that you remove, making sure you get all of that white pith because that's the bitter stuff. Although I'm not opposed to bitter flavors in this salad. I'm going to turn those omelets off. And then what you want to do is you just take your knife and you go in like so between the actual segments of the pith and remove it like that. Pretty cool, huh? That's what they call the Supreme. That's right. That's called the Supreme. Here's a man who's attended his uh, Johnson Wales cooking school, correct? <laughs> now, in this case, there might be the need. Some people might actually want to add a little bit of thin sliced red onion or scallion here. That's very traditional to have a component of onion with this citrus, but we're not going to add that today. Now, what we'll do is we'll take our little frittate and stack them up just like if you were in some beautiful little restaurant in Spain even, where they make the tortilla española and then they stack them up around like that. We're just going to allow them to sit like so. Then we're going to while those sit there for a second, because you don't want to cut them while they're extremely hot. If you let them cool for just about a minute, that when you cut them they won't tear so much. Then we add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Do you have to worry about overcooking the egg? or? No, this is a case. Well, I mean, if you really overcook it, the only thing that'll happen is it'll burn. If you cook it just right, it'll be just gelled inside and nice and firm. And uh, if it cooks a little bit longer, it gets a little rubbery. But in this case, that's not such a big deal because we're going to cut it into thin strips. And it being part of the salad, that textural change is actually not too bad. So you don't have to worry about it. And the main event in understanding good Italian cooking is that your whole... The way you do things is right. As long as, you, as long as you don't let anyone know that a mistake has ever been made, then you never have to worry about having made the mistake. Just deny it in the end. Say, oh yeah, I meant for the eggs to be rubbery because it's a counterpoint to the delicate salad texture. So we're going to season that just a bit. We're going to add a little pepper, a little salt. And then we're going to take a bread knife and just saw. And if we tried to do this with a regular knife, we might tear them, but we don't want to tear them. Because trying to explain torn eggs <laughs> like explaining late coming homes. It just isn't going to work for anybody. So now we cut those into pieces. And then, boom. Now, you don't have to serve this warm. These could be made uh, six hours in advance and served at room temperature or even slightly coolish. But I kind of like the way that they mix together the warm egg and the room temperature or coolish salad. It kind of, you got to be gentle when you toss this through because you've spent all that time constructing that beautiful thing. And then over the top of that, just a little bit more of these fennel fronds. And if you've been to Sicily, and particularly around Palermo and the mountains in and around there, the mountains as you go inward, the wild fennel is something that grows all over the streets. And they use everything from the seed to the pollen to the flowers to the stalks to the stems. And it's actually a pretty amazing thing. Now let's serve up a little snack here. What we have here to go with it is something called sfincione, which is a sfinci, which is any one of a thousand things, often enough either a pastry or a pizza. But the sfincione is a beautiful, artisanally made, double-crusted pizza, for that matter, that has a little bit of broccoli and a little bit of ricotta. And it goes beautiful with this salad, which would make a perfect first course. And as a matter of fact, when I was at this beautiful Osteria de Vespri, they served us this before we even got to our first course. And that made it a heck of a lot of fun. While you sit back and take a little taste of the local white wine. And there we have our first beautiful course. When we come back, I'll show you how we make a simple pasta with just nothing more than breadcrumbs and raisins. So stay with us. Buon appetito, fellas. Hey, 
welcome back. So we're here, we've just finished up a little bit of our sfincione and the delicious frittatine in insalata or the delicate little fried egg frittata salad. And the next course that I enjoyed at this beautiful Osteria de Vespri in Palermo, just off the La Vucceria market, was a simple pasta that was so simple it would bring you to tears. There are four ingredients in it. There's olive oil, garlic, breadcrumbs and raisins. And then of course the fifth ingredient being the pasta. It's easy to make, but one thing I want to talk about just for a second before we cook a little bit is the introduction of hard wheat to Sicily by the Arab culture. The Arabs arrived in the late eight, 800s and around the 900s introduced this hard wheat which has a longer shelf life and a high gluten content and that was really kind of how it really started to sweep through a lot of Italy at this time and what that led is to a lack of famine because you could store this stuff for times when there was no food. Hard wheat and couscous also derived from hard wheat was something that kind of replaced this whole soft wheat culture that in in the Roman times they used something called emmer which was a softer grain that had a tendency to rot and go bad. This hard wheat was something that actually saved a lot, a lot of lives and is now a lot of a huge part of the southern part of the Italian culture for almost all of their pasta needs. However, all of Italy will eat dried pasta at least once a day. It's just in the north the traditional dishes are often made enough from the soft wheat, traditional in and around the Emilian plains, where Bologna is of course the center where they make tagliatelle, lasagne, blah 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 blah. So from that hard wheat, they also make the bread that is a very much a part of the traditional Sicilian culture. And they have things like the sfincione, and then they'll have these different kind of sesame coated breads. And the whole bread culture and the whole dessert culture also driven from this same kind of wheat flour, something that's very fascinating and very Sicilian specific. Now, this dish that we're going to make is so simple that I'm going to make the sauce now and we're going to start another dish. And then we'll talk about it when I bring it all together. But the sauce is basically about four or five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil two or three cloves of garlic that are just sliced paper thin and we're going to allow them to toast for a second in that oil and then we're going to do something that seems almost so easy and so intuitive could you just crush the cauliflower? could I just what? crush it? yeah I don't crush garlic at all I like to slice it thin because first of all I like the flavor that you get you get a lot of flavor from something that has a maximum exposure to the, to the sides or the volume so you'll get more garlic fla flavor out of toasting it like this and also if someone doesn't like it they can pick it out but I tend to use a little bit less now I'll let that garlic toast to a light golden brown and then I'm gonna add these breadcrumbs and I'm gonna toast them and in doing that I have basically created almost the entire pasta sauce the thing that you can't short yourself on is the actual toasting and it takes a couple of minutes and it's something that you just have to kind of watch you use a fresh homemade breadcrumbs? fresh homemade breadcrumbs is the only kind I make and it's Any easy kind of to seasoning do it or? no none zero no fennel seeds no grated cheese no black pepper and that's the to really understand the simplicity of this dish is to understand that more is not better to add something more to this would just make it more complicated to understand how tasty it is when you're when you're sitting there is something that is just it's it's mind-blowing how simple food can taste so good when you're in Italy and it's because they really just don't add anything else and that kind of spare nearly empty taste is something that tastes so good now I'm gonna turn that off I'm gonna take these yellow raisins that I've soaked in just hot water so that they're very soft and I'm gonna sprinkle them throughout and, and what we're going to find, yes? Why the yellow raisins? Because that's just very traditional to this region. But any, any raisin would be fine. It's, it's, it's not so much about the raisin. What this whole dish is about is understanding that it's just the breadcrumbs and the raisins and that garlic. There's not going to be any cheese. There's not going to be anything else on it. It's as simple as pie. Now, I'm just going to let that sit there because I want to start these peppers for our next dish, which was the main course at this Osteria. And that was something called stuffed sardines with sweet peppers. Actually, they call it peperunata. And the interesting thing about the uh, Sicilian dialect is it sounds absolutely fascinating to listen to. Of course, you're all familiar with the fact that the Italians really never really agreed on a national Italian language until literally the beginning of the 20th century. And to this day, all Italians speak the dialect of their hometown as well as the national language of Italy, which of course is the Tuscan dialect because of this crazy guy named Petrarch and Dante who both wrote in the Tuscan dialect and they decided that that should be the one that Italian culture would be ruled by. Now to you make this pepperonata... The, the long thin peppers, the Italian peppers, what they Love call? those, but that's an entirely different dish and they tend to serve those so long... They use these there? They use these at all. Oh, no, yes, okay. they do. This is a very specific thing for something sweet. The long peppers tend to have a little bit more spice to them sometimes and what they like to do with those is just saute them and serve them plain. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a little olive oil in here. We're going to toss these three peppers and onion all together. 
and just cook it very, very slowly until it becomes nice and sweetly caramelized. When we come back... Could you use a regular onion other than a red or they just Always. The you red? can use whatever onion you want. Basically, you want to use the garden, the one that's in your garden. But the red onions are traditionally used more in Sicily because they're a little bit sweeter. I'm going to drop the pasta and when we come back, I'll show you how we bring the pasta dish together and we'll also show you how we work out these sardines. So please, stay with us. Welcome back. Now we've got our simple and al dente pasta tossed here with just those breadcrumbs. And the trick is to make sure you cook it. We've pulled our pasta about a minute before it's fully ready. Now we're going to let it sit in there. We're going to add just the last little pinch of stuff. And that's a couple of chives and a little bit of parsley and nothing else. If anything I was going to do, I'd probably drizzle it with just a little bit of oil. All right, a little bit more than a little bit of oil, <laughs> but some oil, and then we just take it to the plate. Now this is al dente, it's nice and crunchy, but the whole breadcrumb thing is gonna prove to be something spectacular with those chives, and you guys are gonna marvel aloud at first of all, the crunchiness of this pasta and how well it works with virtually no cheese whatsoever. Officer Lynch, I'm gonna have you go ahead and portion it for the gentleman. Now, could you I've add a pancetta or a bacon to that? You wouldn't. Okay. You could add anything you want to any pasta dish you ever wanted. But in this case, this is all about restraint and simplicity. So what we're doing is talking about the dishes that you'd actually not put anything to. Okay. Now I'm going to add about a tablespoon or two of sugar and a little bit of vinegar to create an agrodolce, which is the Sicilian mantra the for using a lot of their food. They love sweet and sour. They love that nice action of a little bit of pepperoncino and I'm going to add a little bit of peppers. And then we're going to make a very simple dish involving more breadcrumbs and these beautiful sardines. And I'm going to take just a little bit of an anchovy, two dried salted anchovies. I'm going to put them in a pan with about four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And I'm going to toast up some more breadcrumbs which are going to become the filling for the sardines. We're actually going to stuff them with some dried currants some sliced almonds, and the zest of about three oranges. Then we're going to take these breadcrumbs that we've just sautéed and made into a nice, toasty little, something very similar to what you have in the pasta pasta, guys. Oh, pasta dente, dente, crunchy, crunchy. Perfect. Perfect. that's what you want. If there's anything that Americans make a mistake in, in dried pasta, is they overcook it. And that's something that, once you taste it in that right crunchy way, is something that is spectacular. Now, what I have here are sardines that we've actually already had filleted open and also removed the backbone. And that's the key to making this such a simple and easy dish because a lot of people are worried about the little spines and the, the uh, backbone and all that. How would you know when they're fresh and picking them and things like that? When you're at the store, you just check to make sure they're looking at you in the eye and also that they're firm. You just want to see if it's got a good firm texture and then if you just smell it, you can tell whether or not it's going to work. If it smells like a cucumber, it's great. If it smells like sea foam, that's great. If it smells like an old fish shop, you're in trouble. <laughs> so you can pretty much tell. I mean, I would say generally the awareness of the basic American consumer at this point is certainly to the point where we recognize good fish. The idea is getting something, probably the best idea is to make sure in understanding this dish could easily be made with something locally. And that's probably where you're going to get your best fish. Any fish that's been shipped across the world isn't going to be nearly as fresh as the kind of fish that we're going to get from somewhere that our friends caught it or someone that we know caught it. Now, Those fishmongers, would they have that size sardine? They would have that kind of sardine. That, this is a kind of sardine that's available all over the place. And it's uh, very easy to find, but it's also something you have to let them know they want. Fishmongers want you to be happy, but they may not know that you want sardines. So when you go in and you have a relationship with someone like this, you tell them, listen, can you give me some sardines? I saw this on a show the other day, and I want to make it. They'll say, sure. But before that, they might not know. So then what we're going to do is just lay these guys, without tying them up or anything, right across this. And I've preheated my oven to 350. And I'm just going to bake them for 15 minutes. Now, the whole idea of this being too thin or too thick, you don't really have to worry about it. The idea of this fish is that you could certainly eat it even just a little bit rarer than fully cooked. We're going to sprinkle some lemons on it. 
toss it in the oven with just a drizzle of orange juice. And when we come back, I'll show you how we bring the whole last thing together. So stay with us. Hey, welcome back. Now we've just roasted these until they're just cooked through. The filling you want inside to be relatively warm. And then one of the things I like to do when you serve it is bring it out to the table just like this. And then sprinkling over at the last minute a little bit of the components of the stuffing. All of a sudden you get that kind of literary foreshadowing thing. There's a little crumbs on top. There's a little crumbs on the inside. Then we'll take just a little bit of the pepperoncino. Sprinkle that over that. And there you have it, a perfect dish. Now, this is something that I really want people to understand. When you're serving food at home, don't try to make it look like it's been stacked up by three or four people. Make it look like you made it or a grandma made it. And bring it to the table in all of its absolute beauty like this. There you have it, a perfect dish of stuffed sardines with sweet peppers. To serve it, you just put one on each plate, and then we come back later and have another one. I want to thank you guys for being here. You've made it a heck of a good show. I want to thank you guys for being here, and I look forward to seeing you, obviously, on the next... Molto Mario, ciao. A little bit more pepper